hey Valerie, there is or is not a charge hat for the Buck Blues converter. No charge hat for this one. This derivation is very similar to the boost converter, so let's go through it and show everyone how it works. We have the waveforms for the inductor current shown here in the blue, and it's going up and down like the triangle wave we get for an uh, inductor current. And we have the current through the capacitor. And for the calculation, we assume it's average steady state. So the two charges, the charge that goes into the capacitor, so this would be Q1, and the charge that comes out, this would be Q2, these have to be equal to each other. So we only have to look at one of them, one section, in order to figure out the capacitance value that we need. So we're going to choose to look at the first phase and that is when the switch is closed and current is going through the inductor in this way and current is coming out of the capacitor to the load. All of the load current is coming from the capacitor directly. So to figure out the capacitance that we need, we need to start with the capacitance equation. So I equals C dV dT. Since we are in one state for the first part from zero to dt, we can assume that's a discrete, so we can go c equals delta v delta t. Delta v is given to us so that we can consider that the specification, the spec, and we know what kind of ripple we expect, so we can, that is set separately, so we know that value already. What we're trying to find is the capacitance value that meets that spec. And we're going to put the parameters for the first phase, the switch on stage from zero to dt. So let's rewrite these values. So we know the I is going to be the output current. So it's going to be I out. The capacitor is the value we're looking for. Delta V is given to us. Delta T is going to be D T because we're on during that from zero to dt. So those are our basic values, and now we need to figure out the capacitance value. So we just rewrite that equation. So move some terms around. And we have our basic equation. Actually, it's right here. If we want to make it general for a resistor, we can assume our load is a resistor, our load. Then we just put in that value. So from Ohm's law, we know the output current is going to be the output voltage divided by R. So we can just plug that into our equation and we would get C as the average output voltage divided by R. And then we have a delta V at the bottom and then we multiply this by dT. And you would have to plug in the value for V out, and then you would get your capacitance value. So, for the buck boost converter, we have the output capacitance is going to be based on the output current, the duty ratio, and the period, and the ripple that we expect. And if we want to make it more specific to a resistor load, then we can put in the resistance value, and then we need to know the output voltage and you can calculate that separately and put that in there. So there you go, the buck boost converter output capacitance.